Hello and welcome to Lightroom tutorial number one. My name is Michel and I have been a Lightroom user for, well, about 10 years, I guess. I started with my work when the first public beta of Lightroom was out and I have never left this wonderful application. In this first tutorial, I'd like to show you how I set up my folder structure where are those folders located within Lightroom as well as outside of Lightroom, which is essentially the same as you will see in a minute. I will show you why and how I rename my digital pictures. Uh, there's a particular reason why I'm doing this. And the reason why I'm starting with this tutorial, well, it's all about Lightroom in this series, but why am I starting with this strange topic, folders, renaming, all those things. Well, the point is, you have to be organized in a particular way. It doesn't matter how you are organized, but you need a certain system. A system that is scalable, that is easy to use, and that you can build on. So that's pretty important. And I'm going to show you my personal way. Maybe it works for you, maybe it doesn't. Well, you have to find out, so let's get started. I'm having two important hard drives here. One is called data and the other one is just the archive. So what's the difference between those drives? Well, that's an internal hard drive. It's a partition, meaning that I'm working on a laptop with an SSD hard drive in it and I have three hard drive partitions and I'm having an external uh, USB 3 hard drive, which is called Archive. The Archive is not uh, bus powered by an USB, USB cable. It has its own power unit, which is pretty important for an Archive hard drive, because those kind of hard drives are more stable and not as prone to failure, maybe caused by accident. So, that's one important point. If we open my internal hard drive, I have one working folder in this hard drive. And in this working folder, I have all the vital parts that I need for my work. So I have one folder that consists of the uh, uh, present work, that contains the present work. So there's one folder in it. Present work means uh, I have to work on these pictures for maybe another one hour. I have to finish these pictures. Maybe it's personal work, as it is here, or professional work. Doesn't matter. Uh, all the work in progress is stored in this current work folder. And once I have finished my work, I'm transferring this folder over to the archive, to the external hard drive, and there it'll live for the next 10, 20 years or so. I hope so. So this is one folder. Why is this folder on an internal hard drive? And why is my archive on an external hard drive? Well, it's pretty easy to explain. The internal hard drive is fast. I'm using an SSD hard drive and this thing is insanely fast. And you need fast hard drives if you're working on a big bunch of files, maybe large files, many files, so you need speed and it's a good idea to store your pictures at least as long as you're working on those pictures on a fast hard drive or SSD drive, whatever you have. But the archive, uh, I have tons and tons of gigabytes of work. I couldn't even store such a large amount of data onto my SSD drive, so I need an external hard drive, I need a secure one, not particularly fast, but secure. Security is more important to me than speed, so that's important. Okay, so if you look at this folder here, this internal folder, uh, I rename my folder and I have my particular naming scheme, so let me explain that to you. I always start my project folder with the date, the creation date. So I have year, month and day. 
So pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm starting with year and then month and followed by day because this way it's all in a proper order and it's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. After that, I'm uh, typing an underscore, not space. Uh, you should avoid spaces to be sure that uh, these spaces are not causing problems later on. So it's pretty secure to have dash, uh, to have underscores. Okay. After that, here it's written in German, it means people. I'm typing down uh, first when it was created, after that who is to see in this picture or what was this shooting on. So what did I shoot or who did I shoot? In this case, I uh, took pictures of people and then here where I took these pictures. So when, who or what and where. So with these three tags I have some pretty important pieces of information. I can even try to find certain folders at least based on this naming scheme. And I think it is important to have a certain naming scheme for your folders even outside of Lightroom because if Lightroom crashes or if Adobe decides to stop developing Lightroom, I think you will be happy if you're having some tags, some pieces of information based on your folder structure. Of course, that's not enough. Uh, I have tons of keywords later in Lightroom and I add these keywords to every file, but at least I have some short descriptive name here. If I open this folder, I'm having the pictures that I, I shot last summer, I guess. And if you look at these file names, it looks pretty strange. But as a matter of fact, uh, they are or have been renamed because I clearly wanted them to, to be renamed. The first piece of information here, once again, is when I took these pictures. So it's the creation date, year, month, day underscore. And then I have the hour, minute and second. So it's the exact precise creation date. And I didn't rename every single one of these files manually, but Lightroom has its own way, its own batch renaming process and you can simply uh, take the EXIF metadata that is stored into the pictures and put it into the file name so Lightroom can do this for you. And here the ending of the name MME2411 that's the original file name the camera has created for me so I also uh, maintain this original file name this way I can still revert my file names I can recover the original one if I should decide to stick to another naming scheme. So why did I rename my files? Well, it's a pretty easy answer. Almost every camera starts with maybe MME in my case and then the number 0001. So it starts with number 1 and it counts up until maybe in normal cases 9999 and then it stops and starts all over again. So the danger is if you're not renaming your files one day sooner or later you're having two files with the same name and well it could possibly happen that you're copying or moving two files with the same name into one single folder which means that you have to overwrite one of your files, you're going to lose one of your files. And believe it or not, but it happened to me in the past several times that I have lost some files just because I was too lazy to rename those files. So let me show you how you can rename those files and how this folder structure is visible or how it looks within Lightroom. So let me start Lightroom here. And here you can see my whole archive. So 
This is the file name, as you can see here. If you cannot see the file name, just hit the J key a number of times and then it will appear. And you can see here that I have already renamed my files, but let me show you how I did that. It's pretty easy actually. I just selected all my files and then I went to the uh, photo menu, I'm sorry, to the library menu and I chose rename photos. I just know the shortcuts and sometimes even after 10 years I have to find out where the menu commands are. So I chose rename photos and I'm having my own uh, template here but let me create a new one to show you how I renamed those files and let me erase all the information here. So I started with sequence and date and the most important thing is to start with year, month, day. Maybe this one here or this one here works too. After that I just typed an underscore followed by hour, minute and second. So here the hour followed by minute and then second. And lastly, I just append the original file name here in the end. So I have the file name, the current file name, just insert it, and that's it here. In this case, uh, I'm receiving a pretty long uh, file name because the current file name is the modified file name. In this case, I wouldn't work because I would have doubled the information which is not necessary in my case. But that's my template that can be applied during import or later on, doesn't matter. It will rename your file within Lightroom as well as the original file on your hard drive because Lightroom never imports the pictures physically. It just creates links to the original files, meaning whatever you are doing within Lightroom if you're deleting files, if you're renaming files, if you're moving files from one folder into the other, it also does the same thing on your hard drive. So after that, I saved my templates, my settings, uh, which can be achieved by clicking onto this pull-down menu and then choose Save Current Settings as New Preset, which I did. And my preset is called here, year, month, day, hour, minute, second, file name. I think it's a good way to name those templates after what they are doing. So don't call them my super renaming template. Just choose a descriptive name that is good visible and that tells you what this preset is going to do. Okay, so lastly, let me show you how my external archive uh, is looking. And I think after that, it's enough for today. Uh, I'll continue on another day. So my external hard drive, which I'm having here, uh, also just consists of one major folder, which is called archive. These folders here are just backups of my other folders. I'd like to cover these folders later on. So these folders here are just backups. But the archive, that's the most important thing. And as you can see, my photo library, I have audio, photo and video archives. My photo library is just based on a uh, structure by year. It's pretty easy, it's scalable, it's unambiguous, it's easy to work on. So I have maybe the year 2014. In the year of 2014, I have January, February, March, and April. So every month gets its own, uh, its, its own folder. And into, within these folders, I have these projects. So that's what I already told you, and they are all named after this particular naming scheme. So pretty easy. How does it look within Lightroom? Well, you can guess it looks exactly the same way. I have the... Uh, uh, mother folder if you call that, the, the, the home folder, the top folder and into this top folder which is called photo library I have every single year it looks exactly the same way and once I have finished my work which is the case here I just take my current work 
and move it onto my external hard drive and then it gets copied onto the external hard drive and it won't be visible anymore any longer into my current work folder. So this is my folder structure. This is my way of organizing folders and renaming files. I think it's pretty important to have some sort of structure, folder structure, file renaming structure. You need to devise a plan to do that before you're starting your Lightroom work because if you want to do that later on, it'll going to be a lot of work, just trust me. So if you're having any questions, just write down a comment and it'll be my pleasure to answer your questions. And by the way, I'm sorry for my wacky English, that is not my native language. Uh, I'm living in Switzerland, as you can hear, but I hope uh, you could understand what I tried to tell you. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you like some more, just let me know. Okay, bye-bye.